Now that we have a start of using coordinates and the coordinate plane in geometry, we're going to take a look at how we can apply these coordinates in order to complete proofs and establish locations of our geometric figures. In order to do this, we need these items. We need to look at variable coordinates and the use of literal equations. Start For starters, let's just define what these are. Variable coordinates are coordinates on the plane that have at least one variable for a direction. So we're used to seeing things in terms of x and y, and typically x and y are numbers. But as we work with variable coordinates, we could say something like the coordinate 0a, or b0, or even the coordinate cd, in order to establish a location. The nice thing about using variable coordinates is that they do stand for any location on the graph that meets the qualification. It could be positive, negative, on an axis is where we have the zeros. Now, also, in working with literal equations, or variable coordinates and coordinates in geometry, is the use of literal equations. Literal equations are equations that describe an actual situation have multiple variables. A lot of times when we're looking at variable equations, what we're looking at is situations um, such as area formulas. So the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. Or perimeter is 2 times the sum of the length and the width. These are literal equations and we'd be able to solve one equation for a variable in terms of another variable. So we're going to make use of these two concepts as we go through this lesson. So let's take a look at using variable coordinates to begin. RECT is a rectangle with a height A and length 2B. The y-axis bisects EC and RT. What are the coordinates of the vertices? So what we have here is very open and general. We know we have a height of A and a length of 2B and that the y-axis bisects EC and RT. So let's take a look at what this could appear like. First let's get our general XY axes and if the y-axis bisects EC and RT, then as I go through and draw in my rough rectangle, I know that RT and EC make up my horizontal parallel lines. It's the only way I could have them both bisect is if they are completely horizontal. Now as we start to look at where the coordinates are, we have a height of A according to this information here. That means that the location, the Y value, for both E and C is going to be A because the Y coordinate describes our height. <coughs> Next, we need to figure out a length of 2B. Well, if our y-axis bisects EC and RT, then the distance from E to C is going to be my length of 2B, but if it's bisected, then each side will be B units away from this axis. That means my coordinate on the right is going to be BA and on the left will be negative BA. Then putting things down into coordinates for R and T we'll have a negative B and 0 because it's sitting on the axis and for T we'll have B and 0. Again it's sitting on the axis and it's directly below point C. So we now have the coordinates for each of our variables and each of our vertices. Let's try another one of these, see what it looks like. 
kite is a kite where I, the length of IE is 2A, the length KO is B, and the length of OT is C. O represents the origin of a graph. So, get a quick set of axes sketched in here again. Let's see if we can make that one a little bit cleaner. And we have this kite. And we're going to name the vertices K, I, T, and E. And then we're going to take a look and see what we can do about these directions. Our center point on our graph is O, that's the origin. And we know that the length of KO is B. Well, K sits on the axis, so it's going to have a coordinate of 0 for the Y. And if the length from K to O is B, then this is negative B. From O to T has a length of C, so we're going to establish that this is the coordinate C O or C zero. Next, the length of I E is two A, and since this is cut symmetric from K to T, we're going to have an equal distance above and below the origin, sitting on the axis makes it convenient, and we're going to have the point zero. A for I and 0 negative A for E giving us a distance of 2A for that direction. So placing things on the axes as much as possible will greatly simplify the writing and the coordinate locating that you have to do. Now as we go through we can use these different coordinates in order to find distances and other items that we need. For instance, in order to find the distance from K to I, so distance KI, we're going to use our distance formula, which is the square root of the length of the individual pieces. So how far, what's our vertical change from K to I? Well, that's going to be a length of B and we're going to square that. Next, what is our vertical change? Well, that'll be from 0 to A, so that would be A, and we'll square it. So until we find out what exactly A and B are, this is the distance. But as soon as we have that, we just substitute in those values and work from there. Now, the reason we're doing all this is our next lesson is going to be writing a proof using coordinate geometry. So let's see how we can at least start to think in terms of getting a proof if we needed to plan a coordinate proof for the theorem that diagonals bisect each other. Specifically we're going to look at the diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other. So how would we go about this? First we'd have to establish the locations. So establish coordinates. This will be done either in terms of actual numbers or the variables themselves. Next, we'd have to find the midpoint of each diagonal. Once we have those midpoints established, we have a couple of options. If those midpoints are written in the same terms, we would be done. If the midpoints are not the same, they, we would not be done. And what we'd have to do is find the distance from each vertex, from the vertex on each side to the midpoint. And once we have those vertices 
verte vertex to midpoint distances established, we'd show that they are the same, and then that would show that we are done. So we are either finished there if they are the same for each, or go through and establish the distances to the midpoints and show that those are the same. So a lot of different things we can do with coordinate geometry. Make sure you have these ideas down and are ready to use them.